Welcome to online worship from the Two Rivers Benefice, and thank you for joining us. All the words for the service will be shown on the screen, and the words that we say together will be shown in yellow type. And now our opening prayer. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Let's now take a few moments to say sorry to God for all the wrong things we do, think and say. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. You made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile all people, yet we have brought disharmony among races. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in our differences, yet we make them a cause of enmity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession, to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond His treasure, how great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away, as wounds which Mother chose and won, bring many sons to glory. Upon him. 
his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill-treat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Today's reading from Luke's Gospel, often referred to as the Sermon on the Plain, sounds a lot like Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, doesn't it? But there are some significant differences. For one thing, it's shorter. Luke includes barely half of the Beatitudes found in Matthew. But 
Luke adds something to Matthew's reassuring list of blessings that might make us squirm a bit if we listen with honest ears. Along with his short list of blessings, Luke includes a corresponding list of woes in Jesus' sermon. Someone once said that any person preaching on this text would do well to put on a hard hat and protective gear because there's no way to approach these blessings without hearing the woes that go with them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the passage again, but this time changing the order of the verses so that the blessings and the woes are together. So here goes. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. Woe to you when you all speak when when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those that hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask them for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. So, what are the blessings and the woes from the first part of this passage have to do with Jesus' instructions for living like true saints of God in the verses that follow. Well, at first, it sounds like the very things that bring us woe are also the same things that bring us blessings, doesn't it? But there is a difference. Look carefully at what Jesus is saying in these Beatitudes and their matching woeitudes, if we can call them that. What do all the blessings have in common? Seeking God. What do all the woes have in common? Seeking ourselves. I think the message is actually pretty simple. We're blessed when we seek God, regardless of our earthly circumstances. And we find woe whenever we're self-satisfied instead of God-hungry. When Jesus blesses the poor and hungry, the sorrowful and the ridiculed, he isn't saying that we should all aspire to poverty, hunger, sorrow or being verbally abused. He's saying that God is present with us even when the world has abandoned us, that God loves us even when everyone else hates us. As saints of God, we find blessing in seeking God, being hungry for God, loving those whom God loves no matter what. When Jesus announces woe to those who are rich, eat well and enjoy fame and admiration from people, he's not saying that wealth, good food and popularity are bad things. He's saying that when we start to take material blessings for granted, or worse, think that we've somehow acquired these gifts by our own efforts efforts alone, we abandon God and our self-dependence will be our spiritual doom. But then we come to verse 27. But I say to you that listen, and no matter which camp you put yourself in up to now, whether blessed or full of woe, none of us 
can escape Jesus' direct commands. We're all here, right now, hearing the word of the Lord together. There's no fudging on this one. Every one of us is being told to love our enemies, bless the people who curse us, and do good for the, to the very people who hate us. If someone slaps us, we're to turn the other cheek. Now make no mistake, Jesus isn't telling us to passively accept abuse here. In that time and place, striking someone on the right cheek meant a backhanded slap that was intended to establish superiority. If I wanted to punch you in the face with my fist, which I don't, but if I did, my right hand would hit your left cheek and I would, in effect, be calling you my equal. When Jesus tells us to turn our left cheek to someone who insults us by assuming superiority over us, he's telling us to affirm our own value as a beloved child of God. In essence, turning the other cheek is like saying, I refuse to accept your arrogant insult. I dare you to consider me your equal. And likewise, offering your undergarment to someone who's sued you for your cloak would leave you stark naked. But there was no shame in being naked in first century Palestine. The shame was in causing or viewing another's nakedness. Once again, Jesus is turning the tables on us here, reminding us that God's kingdom doesn't play by earthly rules. The things we think are important wealth, fame, power, these mean nothing in the kingdom of God, whereas love, mercy and compassion mean everything. Loving our enemies isn't a ticket into sainthood. Jesus' command to love our enemies is born out of our sainthood. It's the way we're supposed to respond to being blessed. When we're hungry for God, we want the things that God wants. And God wants every person on earth to know him and to love him. When we're seeking God, we feel the pain and sorrow that God feels for the people who are hurting. These are the people God loves, remember. Every person on earth. When we're focused on spiritual wealth, money loses its power over us. As we practice generosity, we lose the desire to accumulate more than we actually need. And we may even find that we need considerably less than we thought we did before. When we stand up to injustice with love and generosity, we affirm that every human being is loved by God, worthy in God's sight. So here's the thing. We are saints because we are sinners. Sinners who have been forgiven and loved and graced into sainthood. It has nothing to do with what we do and everything to do with who God is. God loves us. God made us for that very purpose, so he could love us and we could love him. He loves us enough to forgive us for being satisfied with ourselves for gorging ourselves while others go hungry, for hoarding our wealth while others have nothing. Yes, he loves us enough to forgive us for everything we've ever done to separate ourselves from him. If we will only ask his forgiveness, he will forgive. God loves us enough to transform us from sinners into saints. And we join the great company of saints who have gone before us and the great company of saints who will come after us, all of us forgiven, all of us loved to our very core. We need to remember that God's love is not limited by our standards. In his son Jesus, God is setting a new standard. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Do to others as God 
has already done for you. Not so that you can become a saint, but because you already are. Amen. Let us now respond by affirming our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today in our prayers, we thank God for all his blessings to us, food, families, friends, and we also ask for the strength we need to continue as his disciples, living our lives to reflect his glory in all that we do. So in Jesus' name we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the work of your church here on earth of which we are part. Thank you for the help and guidance given us by your clergy and lay ministers who often have to deal with difficult and distressing situations. Grant to them the wisdom and strength they need to carry out their tasks day by day. We are fortunate to be able to worship here openly and without fear, but there are parts of the world where to be a Christian is hazardous and worship cannot take place freely. Dear Lord, we ask that you will protect our fellow Christians throughout the world and we pray for matters to improve so that all may worship openly, unafraid of repercussions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Charles, our new king, and Camilla, his queen consort, as they begin their new roles. Guide his ministers in Parliament and help them as they try to navigate very choppy waters, much of which has been caused by matters outside their control. Many people have been made very anxious by rising prices and rising interest rates, and for some, they do not know which way to turn. We pray, Lord, that you will help all who are worried and distressed by the uncertainties which these matters bring, and guide their footsteps towards yourself, knowing that they can lay their burdens upon you and that you can calm their fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our local communities are made up of a diverse section of humanity and because we are human, there are bound to be areas of friction and disagreement with one another. As disciples of Jesus, we need to try and help people to come together in amity, leading by example but we cannot do this without God's help. And so we pray, dear Lord, please grant us patience, wisdom and love so that that love may overflow to our neighbours and spread outwards to the benefit of all. Locally, harvests have been gathered in and fields are being prepared and planted with crops for next year. We thank you, Lord, for the work of our farmers and ask that you bless them with good weather in due season so that bountiful harvests may be produced. We are fortunate to live in a temperate climate, but farmers in other parts of the world are sometimes left to struggle, and a failed harvest could mean disaster for their community. Dear Lord, we pray for farmers throughout the world, that their efforts may be rewarded, and that no one goes hungry in the 21st century. The future of our planet is very much in our thoughts as we note that more and faster climate change is happening, caused undoubtedly by our careless stewardship of the earth. Dear Lord, open our eyes and help us to see the bigger picture so that by making changes in our own lives, this will help to slow down the effects of climate change so that generations to come 
will have a habitable environment where man and wildlife can live together in harmony. As well as climate change, damage is caused to our planet and to mankind through wars and the weapons of destruction which are deployed. Lord of Peace, we pray that all mankind will heed your son's words and love their enemies, do good to those who hate them, bless those who curse them and pray for those who ill-treat them. In this way, peace could be restored and the world made a safer place for everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the unceasing work of our National Health Service, which has been put under unprecedented strain in recent years. New vaccines are helping to ease the burden of illness caused by COVID-19, but there is still a huge backlog of operations and procedures which has to be worked through, and staff are exhausted. Dear Lord, Please help all those working in the NHS, in care homes and those employed by care providers. Give them the strength, knowledge and compassion they need to fulfil their tasks and grant to them much needed rest so that they can be refreshed. We also ask you, Lord, to help and support all those who care for families in their own homes, where often they are the only carer and respite for them is not always easy to obtain. Walk with them, Lord, through each day and grant to them patience and rest so that they do not become exhausted. Dear Heavenly Father, we hold before you now all those we know who are in need of our prayers today, whether through sickness, bereavement or anxiety, and ask that you wrap your loving arms around them and support them in their need. We also remember all those who have died in the faith of Christ, trusting in your mercy that you will grant them a place in your heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's now share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And now our closing prayer. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>